but now with SoundCloud right now, it's just really bridging everything together. Facts, yeah. Like Baby Santana listens is like listens to Doo Wop Kane, and Dami listens to like like all the plug artists. Ooh, I was at the Ken Carson show, and P and I and I like was behind stage, like backstage, and people in the. What's going on, guys? You're watching Kids Take Over right now. Uh, LA to Van sorry, Vancouver to LA. That's where we're from. Word. You oh, so you're, you're from Vancouver? Yeah, that's where I live, actually. Sick. Yeah. I'm, I'm just out here, probably the same reason as you, just like, you know, working. Just working, yeah. Yeah. She should, man. Bro, I was really interested um, in talking to you because your whole lane is just something that I've been like low key listening to. I'm not like super, super like dive deep into it, mm. but I've been like exploring, you know? Yeah. Yeah, like the first person I heard was like, I think it's pronounced Brakens or Brakens. Brakens? Yeah. Crazy voice, huh? Amazing. Crazy vocal, yeah. Crazy yeah. vocals. Yeah. It's just, I'm so interested in this and you're the person I want to talk to because I think my brother showed me your music. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, man, like what are, you, what are you doing out here in LA right now? Um, right now I've just been making a lot of good music, like jumping around, working with a bunch of producers, just mm -hmm. seeing some of my friends. Like I, I was with Alden like a couple of nights ago. Mm -hmm. Just saw him, just chopped it up, saw him, talked to him, see how he was doing, because he just dropped his EP. Mm -hmm. And I'm on like the first song off of it, so it's super cool to right. just like, really just, I was just really focusing on just making as much quality music as possible, mm -hmm. while at the same time balancing, like making sure that I have enough time to still enjoy myself. So like on the weekends, like I might go to some sessions, but mostly I'm just chilling. Like I just like, we're staying in an Airbnb right now, so like we've just been like kicking it there whenever I don't have anything else to do. Man, I feel you. I think for me, I'm like the opposite. Like when I'm in LA, I'm like, well, every second I have to be doing something. Yeah, and the, yeah, no, I. That's how it was the first time I came out here. Yeah. Um, because I came out here for like a two week span of time. Yeah. And um, it was hilarious because I was just trying to jump to everything back to back to back to back to back to back to back. Yeah. And then I got home and I realized, bro, what? Like, yeah. <laughs> take a step back and you realize that. For those periods of time that you're out here, you have to like space stuff out too, mm. so that you can have time to yourself and have time to just sort of like just enjoy LA. Cause like it's cool to do all like the LA things, like jump from studios, go to concerts, and like go to parties and stuff. But sometimes you might just want to chill. Like just sometimes you just might want to listen to some music, go swim, turn hot tub, something like that. Just kick it, and that's really just what I kind of been doing on the weekends and stuff. Man, I, I gotta get accustomed to that. Yes, yeah, because like you should. <laughs> yeah, because seriously, man, it's like I think the whole thing is like people say, oh, like you know, do what you love, right? Do the yeah. job you love. But then it's like, you know, if you're only doing that, you're gonna get sick of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah exactly. So I feel that. I feel that. Like though. after those two weeks of out here, where I was just making music, I got home and I was just done with music for a bit. Like I had to take a step back just to recoup, recharge, yeah. and I did that, and then I came back and made like a bunch of really good music. Oh, so. Yeah. Those breaks are actually something really important to me. Right, I think people need to hear that, man. You, uh, you actually grew up in like, like hell of like different places. Yeah, like, I know you mentioned like like Belgium was like one of them yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah, I was over there for one one and a half years. Yeah, yeah, around there. What, what's around like there. the main place that like you settled down and you actually lived in though? Indiana. Indiana. Okay, yeah, right. hence why I like I came up with the name Midwest. Okay, so that's in the Midwest of America. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay, and so okay. I had to change my Instagram user because I was just kind of bored of it because it used to be just Edgar Dot, like my last name. Yeah, Midwest. Yeah, like like better. something like very high schoolish. I, th I think you you made the right decision. Yeah, to change it. yeah. definitely. Yeah, but so Indiana. Okay, so mm -hmm. you've only been making music for like two years, because You said twenty twenty. Seriously, for around two years. But I started out doing. I was a poet. Like I I wrote poems and I used to do like one day my English teacher Miss Horton pulled me aside. I was like this is actually really good. You should try and write more. I was like, okay. And so it was just sort of funny because I got thrown into a little situation. So at school, there was like two kids beefing. Okay. And so they had a big thing at lunch where they would just make diss tracks on each other. And like they were rapping in front of the whole school. It's, it was like- Is that a real beef or is that like a joke beef? No, I don't even know. That's the thing. Like okay. I, I thought it was a joke beef. And so I just hopped in and gave my two cents. I was like, you know what? Let me let me spit some fire. And so I downloaded the um, instrumental for Look At Me by X. <laughs> okay. And so I wrote, like, used, like, the same rhyme scheme and, like, delivery that he used, but just changed the lyrics and stuff okay. like that. I released it, 
And then after that, like, whole school went crazy. And they're like, oh, my God, did you hear did you hear Edgar's song? I was like, yeah, yeah, and, like, all those things. Damn. And then um, I got in trouble for it. Because you swore and stuff, I'm guessing? I'm yeah, like, definitely yeah. name dropped the school in it. So I can okay. see why they were um, a little angry. Makes but, sense. Um, just got called into the office, so yeah. I still have it on my laptop. Oh, and it's nice. the funniest thing, just going back and listening to that and hearing my voice. Yeah. Like, it sounded like a door, like, squeaking how high my <laughs> voice was. Like Probably before you hit puberty or something? No, nah, literally. Like, before yeah. I hit puberty or anything of the sort, I was just, like, think of, like, a 4'10 kid with a, with a faux hawk yeah. on his head. And then after that, I found, Sound, I found SoundCloud. And through SoundCloud, had X, had Ski, had Yachty. Had Denzel Curry, like Lil Pump, and like this, yeah, that Lil Pump, scene. that yeah. whole era, that whole like yeah. scene, and it was super sick to find that because I found X back like when he had short hair, like like before Look at Me, before Look at Me, he has a very troubled past. We all know that, mm -hmm. but seeing him attempt and even start to actually change that about him is one of the reasons why I like him so much and yeah. like why he's one of my bigger inspirations. Man, a lot of artists we speak to, they they actually bring up X as like this is the reason I started rapping. Mm. So I'm not I'm not that surprised on that. Yeah. Um, but I mean, so the genre that you're in, correct me if I'm wrong. So this is what I read online. There's yeah. like a general thing called hyper pop, yeah. and then under that there's like DG core. Yeah. yeah. So how did you get into that hyper pop lane? Because that's not what X was doing. That's yeah. Completely not it's, completely, but it's different. It's super cool. So basically nowadays, everything is over the internet. Like, literally like discord servers popping up left and right right instagram twitter all these ways for like ways for people to connect to one another and so for me discord was a place for me to sort of find people who have the same sort of music taste and same sort of clothing likes all these things and stuff like that yeah and so it's very funny how i got into discord so there used to be an old um i used to, put, I used to be heavy into roblox like okay. heavily into roblox and yeah. so um, I used to be having into that, like Blender, 3D modeling, all that type of stuff. I was really, really into cars at that time, so I joined a Discord server for said group. And then after that, I met like three producers in there named Larzy, Aloe, and then um, Fifth Way. And Fifth Way's like, and it's crazy because Aloe was in Philadelphia. Larzy was in, I, don't, I, for, I forgot where, but then Fifth Way was all the way in like, in Vietnam. Oh shit. So, you so it was like literally just like yeah. connecting the dots. And so Aloe was more tapped in with the scene than I was. So he sent me a a, a Discord server for this um, group called Losers Club. It was a collective. So it was mm -hmm. like a lot of like the bigger figures in the Digi in the Digi core scene mm -hmm. were really really stemmed from that Discord. Damn. And that was really like what a lot of people birth like say is the birth of Digicore was right. the Losers Club Discord. And so from there started making music with those people. I mean well when you first heard like some of the beats like they're so different from, they're not so different but they're pretty different from rap you know? yeah like you know what did you think of them when you first heard them like i loved them like because yeah. it was so out it was so left field yeah was like because you didn't really expect to hear like a skrillex riser and right. like hard ass like fucking you know, synths and 808s and distortion right in, like in a beat that you thought was gonna turn into like a pure type beat. Yeah. Like yeah. she would just turn like and a lot of people did, did like they like title me as like the Digicore rapper because I actually like rap on the yeah. Beats. Like your latest song you put out, that was mainly rap in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. Literally yeah. just rap. I really only think that you can really a lot of people say are like hyper pop melody. Like right. like and not even my hyper pop like um, Star Boy out of town. I Gabe, love those, those producers, bro. Yes, bro. Yeah. So sick. Yeah. I'm so excited for this e for like this EP to come out cuz I've I've won with Starboy and Out of Town on no it. No way. With me like I produced on it too so it's super sick. It That's was hard. so so I'm, I'm so so excited. Like when's that coming out? Um or you haven't put a date. No, we have a date. I just forgot it. I'm not going <laughs> to You lie. forgot the date? Yeah, no, like I'm just going to keep it about I think it's like sept September. Maybe? Okay. This August, some August September around there. So Gotcha. They don't have to wait that long for that. So Yeah. I'm excited stoked. to hear it. I feel like um you know in your music you you actually do talk about like a lot of like like vulnerable things, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like and I, I, I think it's like things that you went through like in the past. So I'm just curious, like, you know, when you, when you were like earlier in high school, like, is there a story of like certain things that were going on that, you know, that you put into your music right now? Mm, for me, it was mainly just um, had a really, really bad problem with having a lot of problems arise 
and never being able to speak on them, like ever be able to be comfortable talking to my parents or anybody about how I was truly feeling. I have ADHD, so like, so I used to take ADHD medicine, yeah. and sometimes it, it, the side effects of it, it kind of the pro, the cons weighed out the pros. Like, uh -huh. I, I didn't feel hungry. Like at one point, I didn't even feel like myself. Like I just feel like it like drained me of who I was, like my charisma, my charm, and all that stuff was just sort of like sucked up like that because um, it's it's made to make sure that you focus. Right. And so I'd get all my work done, I'd get great grades, I'd do all these things, but then I'd still not be able to, f like, I still wouldn't enjoy school. At lunch, I didn't even eat. Like, mm -hmm. half the time I'd be like, I ate like a, like, I'd like touch the food, like get like a bite in, then I'd be full because- so you lose your appetite? Yeah, I lose yeah. my appetite. I feel that, I mean, I think honestly, man, high school is just like the, the turning point mm -hmm. for like every kid really. It's like, you think yeah. that you're going through a lot of stuff, which I'm sure you did and like, yeah. um, you know, like, I did too, but mm. it's like when you really think about it, like other people are also going through exactly. that, but they just like don't talk about they it. They don't talk yeah. about it or yeah. have any sort of like dialogue about it, especially coming up in a time where social media is like creates such negative views and like people got mad at Kid Cudi for painting his nails. Yeah, he just dress. tweeted and that. He today, just tweeted yeah. that out. And it's yeah. like, if you're not going to be able to accept people for what they want to do and who they want to be, then why are you trying to like act like you're the one that like act like and you have the final say and stuff yeah like right that. yeah like, it's just like a random person yeah it's just like a random person yeah. like a random person would be like oh he paints his nails he's gay like, yeah. how, like how does that have any correlation with anything yeah like people for, fail to forget that like some of the biggest artists like ever paint their nails like uzi back when he had purple hair during the love is rage days he used to paint his nails black right um lil yachty paints his nails tyler paints his nails. but i don't think people said anything about them then yeah you know, exactly yeah. Yeah, yeah it wasn't weird until People started. People got comfortable and started doing it. Taking off because we are on the shoot for my very own nail paint line. Creep. Uh, one thing I did want to ask is like, you know, would you say like the hyper pop scene has a good relationship with this new underground rap scene? Like, you know, because you told me that you were when I was at the Ken Carson show. You was there. Yeah. You were there too. You know. Yeah, it's just really like well, I was at the Ken Carson show. And, and I and I like was behind stage, like backstage, and people in the crowd were like, "Man, what?" And like they put out the cameras, and, stuff like, and it was like, especially for that that sort of like crowd, like that that scene itself. Yeah. Because like Ken and like Destroy Lonely, all all of those like type of artists are like in their own lane. But yeah. now with SoundCloud right now, it's just really bridging everything together. Facts, yeah. Like definitely. some of the people, like 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 Baby Santana listens is like listens to Doo Wop Kane, and Dami listens to like, um like all the plug artists and stuff yeah. like that and it's like it's super sick because Dami isn't even typed into the hyper pop scene yet Dami's one of my closest friends okay and Eric is tapped in heavily to the hyper pop scene but it's also tapped into so many other things as well yeah. that it's like it's really 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 nice right now because right now it feels like genres and like borders are end of like endless like, that's really cool it, it definitely wasn't like that like yeah before. no like beforehand everybody was like these are the SoundCloud rappers Right. These are the YouTube rappers. These are the conscious rappers. These are the real rappers. And then I think these what, are the yeah. mumble rappers. It's I think what you guys have in common is like all of these, all these little scenes, but you guys are all like young people yeah. that are just like making a name for themselves off the internet. That's yeah. why I feel like, you know, so yeah, it's like I would actually like to see a song with you and like Ken Carson or like I know Eric DOA was in the studio with Sofago. Fago, yeah. It's like I would love to, to see Song's things nuts. like that. You know what I'm saying? Song's so nuts. So hard. No, that's, that's so far. I mean, yeah. uh, I would actually like to see a song with you and Pierre. Then yeah. that would be really cool. The reason I'm saying that is Literally because- Literally you know though. What do you mean? What happens if that already happened? You guys made a song together? I don't know, did we? Oh shit, but it's not out, you're saying? I don't know. Okay, okay. The reason I'm saying that is because like, I've noticed that like on one of your projects, you try to make the transitions like go super Seamless, super. yeah. Yeah, and that's something that, that Pierre does really yeah, well. Yeah, it's just like, I think some artists have like forgotten how much like, for example, one of like like the people that you least expect me to like talk about, Roddy Rich, his okay. album, like sorry for being antisocial. That album is like it has transitions from one song to another and it flows really, really well. And I feel like people forget about that. That's something that's that used to be really, really big, like in back in the day. That's why I like Kanye so much. That's why I look up to Kanye so much. Cause yeah. I, Travis I, is pretty good at doing Yeah, that Travis too. is crazy at that too. But yeah. I feel like People understand, and I feel like people can see the Pierre influence from the fact that I want seamless transitions because right. I think he was one of the first artists I stumbled upon that really had 
like who was able to have the ability to even slow down a beat and then use that beat again to make a whole song yeah. on its own. Like from like Monica Lewinsky did no more favors off like the old Pierre Tate. Like right, that right, stuff right. like that. Oh, is so like, you're a bit yeah, a real fan. Yeah, I'm a real fan. Don't don't try me on that. Yeah. <laughs> That's hard. Did you did you like T Lot Five? Yes, I love T Lot Five. Yeah. I really liked Hulu off that album. Yeah, I thought it was a, I bro, I like biology. Song I've been wanting biology one on one since the first snippet came out. Yeah, same with Kobe Rowley when I found out that Pierre produced that. Hell yeah, practice is hard too though. Yeah, SpongeBob, SpongeBob, my nigga Patrick. Yeah, yeah, yeah like who thinks of that man? Yeah. It's crazy. I love, I love Pierre, man. Well, yeah, um, yeah man. I, I did want to ask this as one of the last few things. Is like you, this is what I've, I've heard. Is you're, you're gonna go back to college? Yeah, I haven't even gone to college yet. I just graduated from high school. Oh, sorry. So, so yeah, you're, you're going to go to yeah, college. Yeah, I'm going to Belmont in Nashville for audio engineering. Wow. Yeah. Wow, okay. I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't want to, do, like, sway your decision, obviously. Yeah. Um, but, like, what like, what's the reason for that? Like, um, you can't learn that off, like, YouTube or Yeah, no, nah, a big reason is I'm a really big believer and you can't knock things until you try it. Like, okay. I don't want to miss out on what could be a really, really pivotal experience for me as a person. Mm-hmm. And not as an artist, but as just as a teenager. Like I'm only 18. Like I, yeah. and I just want to be able to, like, experience it, see if it's from me, from like if it's what I want to do. If I want to continue on that course. Right. If not, then I won't continue on that course. And mm-hmm. I have this, and I have the artist, the artistry side of things still available for me. You don't think that's gonna like, just just a situation. like clash? Yeah, like you know, like or like stunt. Yeah. What you're doing as an artist? To be honest, no, because. I make so much music to the point that I could drop a song every day until this year ends. Gotcha. So I'm not concerned about quality or like quantity of anything. It's really just a matter of how it's rolled out, like yeah. how I want things to be done. Yeah, just like you said, you know, just just you know, keep keep doing things that are like original and like mm-hmm. you seem like that's something you really value is like originality, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, bro. But I mean, hey man, um, it was really nice meeting you. Yeah, Let's keep in you. touch and no, you gotta sure. send me this music that you're talking no, about. No, I'll I send it. it or I'll definitely send it. I got you. Yeah. I can definitely play some in a bit. Like I'm down. Do you have a, like yeah, a studio? Yeah, there's a studio downstairs. We should go like right now. Is it more so hyper pop or is it like mm, the rap link? I'll just let it speak for itself, brother. Uh, I think it's just now known that like, I'm versatile. That's all I really want niggas to know. Yo, let's go. Thanks, guys, for watching that interview with Midwest. I just realized in the interview I said um, Eric DOA instead of Doa. Um, I swear I thought that was his name, but nah, I'm still pretty new to this hyper pop genre, but I love it. I really love the sound, so. Let me know in the comments which hyper pop artists you guys want to see more on the channel because um, I want to do more. But otherwise, yo, a lot of you guys ask about the merch. We actually um, have our third drop coming. Honestly, I might just announce it next week or like drop it next week. We're not even sure, but something will happen next week. So uh, follow the IG at Kids Take Over to stay tuned so you do not miss that because trust me, it'll sell out. Um, but yeah, subscribe to the channel. The button should be somewhere here. And I'll see you guys next week because we got a good video.